Lawyers of Reddit, what's the worst way you've seen a person screw over someone else in court, whether it be criminal, civil, or divorce proceedings? Not the worst, but one that sticks out that they did to themselves. Woman shows up to court in a It's Party Time Drink Up t shirt. She was there for her first appearance on a third DUI charge. Judge was not in a humorous mood that day. We now have a Discord. Check out the server in the link in the description. Story 2. Nasty custody fight. The ex-wife was a lawyer and represented herself. The ex-husband had a pretty crappy lawyer. She kept hauling things back to court, trying to get more benefits out of him. And his lawyer just kept let it happening and it was destroying his life. Allegations of child abuse was taking so much money that he could barely afford a crap apartment and couldn't afford a car, which both figured in later for custody. Finally, the ex-wife's father, also a lawyer, asked to meet with the judge and mentioned a few things that he knew was going on. A. One of the children was manic depressive and the ex-wife would take him off his meds before it was the ex-husband's turn for custody. The child abuse allegations were from the ex-husband trying to restrain the child during a manic episode because he wasn't medicated. B. The ex-wife had intentionally timed the child abuse allegation to fall just before the holidays, so the ex-husband couldn't see the kids for Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas. She bragged to family that it would do the maximum emotional damage possible doing it then. C. The ex-wife had forged documents to overstate the husband's income when alimony was being determined. And D. The ex-wife was sleeping with the ex-husband's lawyer. Story 3. Not my case, but still my favorite story. Dude screwed himself over when he went to jury trial for a burglary charge and wore the same distinct sweatshirt he wore the night he committed the crime. Kind of hard to argue the guy in the video isn't your client at that point. Needless to say, he was convicted and spent a few years in DOC. Story 4. More of a case of screwing himself over, but here goes. This was a case another prosecutor in my office had a few years back. 30-year-old defendant was charged with assault of a child after his girlfriend's 14-year-old sister got pregnant. She actually kept the baby so the police just waited and got a paternity test. No surprise, defendant was the father. Defendant wanted probation. Prosecutor refused to offer it. He decided to plead guilty and have a jury trial on punishment. Here in Texas, you can choose to have the jury set punishment. Evidence mostly proceeded as expected. The victim testified to having consensual, aside from not being old enough to consent, banging with the defendant. Paternity test was introduced. Defendant took the stand. His version of events was that he snuck into victim's room at night, covered her mouth, and held her down while he banged her against her will. It seemed like his own lawyer had no idea that's the story he settled on. The jury deliberated for about 15 minutes before returning a verdict of 17 years. The maximum possible as charged was 20. When interviewed by the attorneys afterwards, one of them said that they decided on 17 years so the defendant would never forget the age of consent in Texas again. Story 5. Sitting waiting for my client and the judge is giving a mass colloquy for an alternative program on a DUI, basically probation. Question. Has anyone consumed alcohol or taken drugs in the last 24 hours? Obvious answer aside, one dude proudly raises his hand. I smoked some dope last night. He did not get probation. Story 6. One time I saw an indignant defendant who was in custody tell the judge his public defender wasn't working hard enough, and he wanted the judge to appoint different counsel. The judge asked him what specifically was the problem. He said, I don't want a female lawyer, I need a man who can take charge and fight for me, or something very similar to that. The judge, also female, said that's not how it works. Then he starts yelling and getting into specifics about his public defender, just mainly, I don't like her, she won't visit me, etc. The judge is annoyed and looks at him and is like, fine, I'll appoint another attorney for you. But because you're not satisfied with your attorney and I need time to appoint you new counsel, I'm not going to hear any other issues today and will reset your case. A few days later, the judge sends defendant notice of his new appointed attorney, who happens to also be female, as well as notice of the case reset for six weeks. The case was originally set for a bond hearing and the DA and his PD had agreed to release him on an unsecured bond, meaning he would have gotten out that day if he just hadn't thrown his temper tantrum. Instead, he waited another six weeks in jail just to have another female attorney represent. Story 7. I've seen a parent use non-existent discipline as a tool to win over their teenage child. So that child will choose to live with said rubbish parent, and rubbish parent will receive child support from the other parent. It boils my blood seeing someone allowing their 15-year-old child to drop out of school, get high every day, buy them drugs, alcohol, just about every negative thing you can do to a kid, just so they don't have to pay $100 in child support a month. Edit. For everyone commenting on the fact that child support payments were so cheap, 
Child support amounts in my jurisdiction are relative, based upon the paying parent's situation, income, schooling, assets, etc. They were deadbeats. Part-time, under-the-table, seasonal employment, and government welfare. Story 8. Was involved in a custody case where a wife cheated on her husband and had a child as a result. She let husband believe the child was his until she was about 5 years old and they were divorcing. To stop him from getting custody, she convinced the biological father to get custody thinking that if he won, she would wind up with the child. Became a huge three-way fight. Multiple sets of grandparents involved. Attorney's fees skyrocketed because the case would have been pretty quick otherwise. She couldn't pay her attorney, tried to get the biological dad to, got even messier, etc. Basically, there still isn't an agreement all parties will follow. They are in and out of court every year or so, so she screwed herself. Story 9. Not a lawyer, but this story always gets me. My biological grandmother died 20 years ago of ovarian cancer. She left all her money, trusts, bonds to my grandfather to use while alive and disperse after death. My grandfather remarried something like 15 years ago to my step-grandma. My grandfather ended up dying first a few years back. My step-aunt is a greedy jerk who lives on the opposite side of the country. She's lived off her mother and my grandfather for all her life. She would come over and take them on vacation, where she'd use their money to buy herself things and get a free skiing trip about eight times a year. After my grandfather passed, my step-grandma had to move where her children lived to get care for dementia. My step-aunt had access to not only her own mother's estate, but my grandfather's as well to take care of her needs. That wasn't enough. She decided to try and sue my dad and uncle for their dead biological mother's estate. My dad is bilaterally paralyzed and in a wheelchair. My uncle is a triple bypass survivor with a pacemaker and multiple stints. Both are on fixed disability income. The court date came and I literally wheeled my dad in, while my uncle walked in with a cane. My step-aunt is entirely able-bodied, and rolling in the millions my step-grandma and grandfather worked their whole lives to earn. The judge took one look at the whole picture, and she was absolutely denied access to my biological grandmother's estate. We were there for less than an hour. I don't understand what's going on in the mind of someone like this at all. Like, does the aunt really think they need the money? Because obviously that doesn't sound like the case. Is it really just greed? I don't understand it. As someone who is not, I don't know, I'm not that greedy at least. I like money, but like, I don't need that much. I just don't get it. It really to me just sounds like trying to reach a, a high score leaderboard of money in bank account or whatever. Or from what I'm hearing, probably just like things the aunt owns. Story 10. This wasn't my case, but followed it closely, because it was an acquaintance's divorce proceedings. He and his now ex-wife shared some commercial property that was worth some dough. They were both on the paperwork slash had access to the same info. Well, some crap hit the fan and the property was in arrears, and I think some lien was filed. The husband would try to talk to his then-wife about the whole thing and she would just blow him off. Not only would she ignore him and the finances, she started cheating on him. Fast forward to divorce. It's contentious and they get down to fighting for the primary residence whose market value, unencumbered, is much less than the commercial building. She demanded the house, and the husband effectively offered to give her the commercial building if he could keep the residence. She never paid attention to how bad off the commercial building was, and for some strange reason, her lawyer didn't do any due diligence, so they took the deal. I don't know if the asset allocation included any saving conditions or caveats for the ex-wife, but I did like to see that her own disinterest may have led to bargaining for an underwater property instead of a paid-off house. Story 11. I've been in dispute with British Gas for around 10 years. Every now and again they take me to court. Every time I win and we go away for another few years. The last time I lawyered up, it's in a magistrate's even though it's a civil matter. My solicitor waited for the British Gas guy to swear his oath to tell the truth, the whole truth, etc. Then asked him what he knew of the previous court cases. When the guy said he didn't know anything about them, my solicitor ripped into him, saying that he'd just claimed to tell the whole truth, so clearly nothing he says can be trusted. It went on for a few minutes. It was kind of brutal. The magistrates agreed and we walked away with 600 pounds in costs. It was a joy to watch this bloke who was all, we're coming to make entry to your house and the police will help. Before we went in, be told to sit down and not say anything else unless he was asked a question. To fend off some questions, it's to do with a disconnected meter at my house, for electric to a closed shop. I have written to the CEO. I've had my MP involved and been to court four times. 
British gas doesn't change, doesn't listen, so I've given up. I'll just go to court every now and again and claim my 600 pounds. Story 12. I'm being sparse on details here due to confidentiality, but I had a client who was accused of a very nasty, intimate offense. He had an alibi. He was at work, where he was the boss. He had an employee who could absolutely vouch for his being there. I talked to the employee. Employee confirmed this. It gets closer to the trial. And it's around the time when I need to send in an alibi notice, which is advance notice to the Crown so they can investigate the alibi and determine whether or not it's true. But I am being careful, so I call up the employee again. Turns out my client fired him in the interim. And so the employee quite candidly tells me, oh yeah, he was definitely at work, but that's not what I'll say in court. Screw that guy. He's going down. I did not call him as a witness or file the alibi notice. Still won the trial. But if I hadn't thought to call the guy or if he'd been less candid, my client would have been screwed hard. Offender registry, jail time, the works. Completely innocent. I feel like I've read this one in another thread or something. So if it's a repeat, I'm sorry. On the other hand though, it's still a great story. I love hearing about this guy screw himself over and he wasn't even involved. He wasn't even involved in the court case officially and he still somehow screwed himself over in it. Story 13. I'm not a lawyer, but there was a case going on in my town between a father and son that was hilarious. The dad is a big-time personal injury attorney around here who started his own firm under his name, George Sink, and his son ended up joining the family business. Well, they had a falling out, so the son goes off to start his own firm. He has his dad's name. So the dad is suing the son for using the name he gave him to start his own law firm. People who are named after their parents, I don't know, it's kind of weird to me. It seems a little self-obsessed by the parents, I'm not gonna lie. This isn't a judgment, though. I realize that may have come off as harsh, but like... I'm sure there's plenty of reasons that I just don't understand. Story 14. Too many criminal client situations to count of them screwing themselves over. One of the very few family law cases I handled as a young attorney sticks out to me though. Young woman and young man have child. Young woman seeks divorce from young man because he enjoys the thug life. He had recently been arrested and charged for possession with intent to distribute. Felony. And in possession of a firearm. Unlawful carry. Young man doesn't like her leaving him. He hires a local big name top divorce attorney. Granted, very rural area. Gets temporary divorce order entered saying she cannot have overnight guests of the opposite sex. Common in rural conservative areas. Think it's mostly a thing of a past in most urban areas though. Young woman starts seeing someone new. Young man is very upset about this. Has his fancy lawyer ask for a hearing accusing her of violating court order and seeking full custody. On top of attorney fees. Young woman on advice from a mutual friend hires me for this hearing. I sit down with opposing counsel, and she basically tries to strong arm me with her experience and lays out egregious terms. Mother must not only give up primary custody, but must have visitation with a supervisor and pay child support and attorney fees. She knows I'm a new baby attorney in town, fairly certain I'd been licensed for less than a year. I balk and says she'll see us in court. I go into hearing with a copy of his probation arrangement on his possession with intent to sell and unlawful carry. He hasn't told his attorney about this and she is unaware. She calls him up, establishes how my client had her new boyfriend over on XYZ nights, Judge is very conservative and not pleased. Then, opposing counsel passes the witness. I ask him if he has a job. No. What do you do for money? Things here and there. Oh? Ms. Opposing counsel is awfully expensive. Do you sell drugs? What? Have you ever sold drugs to make ends meet? Uh, no. Introduce a copy of his guilty plea and straight probation sentencing. Judge is now staring daggers at him. I lean over to my client sitting next to me and whisper, if you took a drug test today, be honest, would you be completely clean? Yes. I ask the young man, when was the last time you did drugs? Attorney objects, but judge overrules. I know this judge will drug test people on the spot, as he is also the misdemeanor drug court judge. It's been years, so I'm clean. So if you were tested, you'd be clean? Yes. Opposing counsel asks the same of my client. We agree. Judge has them both tested. He tests positive for the drug he had been charged with the felony for before. My client is clean. Judge denies his motion and asks me to send in new temp orders where young man is required to maintain employment and start paying child support, and places him on supervised visits. Icing on the cake? Opposing counsel actually calls me. She congratulated me on, and I quote, handing her butt to her for the first time in a long time. Story 15. Not a lawyer. Legal assistant. My attorney is pretty old, so he needs me to help him find papers and stuff in the courtroom. So I go over for all domestic and criminal cases. We had a custody case where the mom was already screwed. 
because she was literally picked up by a bounty hunter while the dad was there getting their daughter for visitation. Anyway, dad's new wife gets on the stand and testifies that the mom, the defendant, threatened to blow their house up. Mom gets on stand and says, I didn't threaten to blow your house up, I threatened to blow you up. Judge was just like, what? I feel like this happens a lot with these stories, where someone is so eager to be right that they prioritize being right over anything else. What an incredible way for people to screw themselves over. Story 16. Not someone else, but himself. The guy and his lawyer missed court appearances, sometimes one of them, sometimes both, with little or no warning and with suspect excuses. It started getting ridiculous, and we kept pointing out holes in his story. Like he said he left for another country without knowing about the appearance, but his lawyer stood in court and said he told him beforehand. Or all of a sudden he was in a former Soviet bloc country for fertility treatments and it would ruin everything if he came back now. Or when he was visiting dying relatives on another continent. Or he was going to the airport when he had to rush to the hospital, and showed us an admitting form in another language that we translated. It showed he was there, but also showed that he was discharged. He also tried firing his attorney and saying he needed more time to brief a new attorney, who at the next appearance would say that he hadn't been able to talk to his client, so he needs to adjourn or that he hasn't been paid and his client is basically a jerk and he needs to be relieved. We kept saying to the judge how he was doing it to stall, but the judge kept giving him the benefit of the doubt. We even showed him other cases where he skipped appearances, and the judges threatened sanctions, until finally he didn't show up for an appearance where the judge had specifically told him, I don't care if you're meeting with the Pope. I'm ordering you to be here. Boom. His answer was stricken, default judgment in full. Neither he nor his lawyer showed up for the hearing where the judge determined exactly how much of a judgment we should get, and then had the nerve to file a motion that the judgment was unfair, because he didn't get a chance to dispute anything. Story 17. Had a criminal jury trial for misdemeanor criminal mischief over four years ago. State filed charges and kept amending the information to the point where they left the actual victim out of the trial, and proceeded with the two eyewitnesses. Well, one of the witnesses was my client's ex, and the other witness was the ex's new girlfriend. They claimed my client vandalized the actual victim's car. Client denied everything. Well, apparently the state and both witnesses had no idea that the ex had an outstanding warrant for not paying child support to my client, which created a motive for him to lie. Asking him if he was aware that he had a warrant out for his arrest on the stand, he didn't know. The judge excused the jurors. The bailiff arrested the ex on the stand. State rested. Judge granted our motion for judgment of acquittal because we had a good case law for the victim not being there. Client walked away free and the ex went to jail.